Hey, everybody. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Today's story is a continuation of yesterday's story. So if you haven't watched that yet, go back and watch Stockholm Story's Giant Problem. Then watch this one. Yeah, and you get to see what happens at the end. Yes, I can't wait to see. Oh, that's right. I already know. Yes, that's right, Psycho. You know what happened. But they don't. So, hopefully you enjoy. Psycho and Slurpee's Giant Problem. Solved by me, Mark Ricketts. Illustrated by John White. Chapter 1. Breakfast. While the giant finished watering his vegetable garden, Psycho and Slurpee rested under the tall trees before finishing their hike. Hey, Psycho, said Slurpee. Catch! With that, Slurpee threw an acorn to Psycho. Sacco got into position, washed the acorn, reached up grabbing it with his hands, and then pulled it in towards his chest. Nice catch, Sacco, complimented Slurpee. Thanks, Slurpee. I've been practicing every day, explained Sacco. Then he added, it's important to practice again and again so that you get better. Meanwhile, the giant wiped sweat from his brow. He had just finished his work, and he was ready for some breakfast. I'm hungry said the giant. Sacco didn't want to be near a hungry giant. He ran to the giant's chicken coop and collected some eggs. Slurpee quickly lit a campfire. Hurrying, Sacco tossed an egg to Slurpee, who put his hands up and grabbed the egg. It cracked and dripped on the ground. Remember, hands close together and bend your knees and elbows to cushion the egg as you catch it, reminded Sacco. Sacco tossed another egg and Slurpee caught it perfectly. Slurpee cracked the egg on the pan and began cooking it. Sokka continued throwing eggs to Slurpee until there were enough eggs for a giant-sized omelet. That smells great, said the giant. Will you teach me how to catch while it cooks? Chapter 2. Catch This Sokka explained there were four things to remember when catching something. First was to watch the ball in the air until it was in your hands. Second was to move your feet so you're under the thing you're catching. Third, you had to put your arms and hands into position. If the ball is high, thumb's close. If it's low, pinky's close, added Sacco. The final thing is giving with or cushioning the ball, said Sacco. Now you try, encouraged Slurpee. So the giant picked up a boulder and underhand tossed it up into the air. When it finally came back down, the giant followed all the steps that he was taught and caught the boulder right above Sacco. You guys can come back at any time, said the giant happily as he picked up the omelet. As long as you're ready to catch one of my throws. As the giant looked down, he saw Sako running away as fast as he could, with Slurpee waving and yelling back, I think Sako is running to get his glove. We'll see you again soon. Chapter 3. A Perfect Ending By the time Slurpee finally caught up to Sako, it was almost dinner time. Boy, that was a fun long distance run, Sako, said Slurpee. Sako didn't answer. He was busy looking into a clearing. As their dad was cooking, a brother and sister played. The boy faced a hoop, held the beanbag in one hand, swung his arm down and back, then stepped forward as his arm swung forward and up. He let go of the beanbag right before his arm swung even to his chest. His arm followed through as he aimed. The beanbag went up and then down. It landed with a plop just inside the hoop. Ha! said the boy. A point for me! Not to be outdone, the girl threw her beanbag. She added a little more power, and her throw landed in the middle of the hoop. Guess you taught me well, she said as she winked and walked over to her mom. You see, Slurpee, said Sako, tossing underhand is a great way to throw when aiming at something. Yes, Sako, replied Slurpee. It's also easier to catch that kind of throw, because it gives you more time to watch the ball. You're really listening to me, aren't you, Slurpee, said a proud Sako. Slurpee? Slurpee wasn't listening. He had his eyes on the picnic table as his stomach grumbled. At that moment, a ball came whizzing by Sako's head. The boy was throwing old tennis balls overhand at a tree right in front of Sako and Slurpee. The tree was farther away from the boy than the hoop. He stood sideways and brought the next ball back and up over his shoulder. As he stepped towards his target, he turned his upper body and brought his hand forward over his shoulder. The boy let go and then followed through with his arm to help his aim. This time, the ball hit the tree. Slurpee yelled, Nice throw! The startled boy jumped back at first, but then invited Sako and Slurpee to join his family for dinner. They all enjoyed a healthy meal together, and the family laughed as Slurpee shared stories of their adventures. 
Who's ready for an egg toss? Asked the dad as Sokka and Slurpee looked at each other with a smile. The end. I hope we never meet up with that giant again. I hope we do. I invited him over. Oh, dear. Well, guys, if you can, go outside, work on your catching, throw up a ball, look up at it, get in position with your feet, put your arms in position, and then catch it with the cushion. You could also try to do some of the challenges that were in the book that the girl and the boy did. Yeah, I love throwing in a hoop. Me too, let's go. All right, I'm going to go out with you guys. You are? Yeah, I can't wait to throw and catch. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. See you, everybody.